fake document syndicates masterminded by Myanmar nationals busted. Youth involvement among key elements in 2021 budget. Good afternoon, I'm Azlani and you're watching Updates at Noon. Two document forgery syndicates masterminded by Myanmar nationals are targeting ethnic Rohingya and Arakan Muslims were crippled in an immigration department operation in the Jalan Lebuh Pudu area, Kuala Lumpur, on Tuesday. 15 Myanmar men and a Bangladeshi man were arrested while a local man who rented his premises to the foreign nationals involved was issued a witness summons to assist in the investigation. Immigration Director General Dato Hairo Zaimi Daud said the syndicates were believed to have been in operation for about two years. Their activities were detected by authorities following the landing of scores of Rohingyas at Kuala Muda Beach, Kedah in March 2019. The investigation found that around 30 to 50 customers dealt with these syndicates each day. Customers will be charged between 30 ringgit and 150 ringgit depending on the type of document. Dokumen palsu yang ditempah pelanggan akan disiapkan pada hari yang sama dan juga akan diserahkan pada hari yang sama bagi mereka yang tinggal di Lembah Kelang. Bagi mereka yang tinggal di luar Lembah Kelang, dokumen-dokumen ini akan dihantar melalui perkhidmatan kuria setelah bayaran diselesaikan. The syndicate targets illegal Rohingya ethnic by issuing fake documents, including the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees UNHCR card, Rohingya Organization card in Malaysia. In Tuesday's operation, various documents were seized, including 35 UNHCR cards, 13 Immigration I card, and 5 Malaysian Construction Industry Development Board CIDB cards, as well as 3 computers, 3 laptops, 6 printers, 4 laminators, and 5 pen drives. 24 new Tamhidi or Foundation Students of University Science Islam Malaysia USIM for the 2020-21 session, all of whom are from Sarawak and Kedah, are being placed under a two-week quarantine at the university's residential colleges in Nilai following the latest development of COVID-19 in the two states. USIM Student Housing Centre Director Muhammad Salehuddin Shukur said of the total, five were from Kuching, Sarawak and the rest were from Kubang Pasu, Kedah. Kita akan letak di blok yang sama tapi di unit yang sedikit berjauhan. So, the, uh, room, uh, jumlah pelajar pun dikurangkan. Satu rumah kita letakkan tiga pelajar dan ada yang empat pelajar. Uh, maksudnya, kami uh, tujuannya adalah untuk mengurangkan risiko. Kedah ialah kita buat self-quarantine di mana pelajar kita akan uh, tetapkan di situ selama lebih kurang 14 hari dan uh, makanan kita hantarlah kepada pelajar. He said this at the Tamhidi Students Registration Session in USIM Nilai. Yesterday's registration session was also conducted via drive through The Ta'ruf or orientation session from 3rd to 7th August will be conducted online for all students, including those who are not quarantined. Meanwhile, Muhammad Salahuddin said a total of 1,487 students were offered to do foundation courses at USIM for this 2020-2021 session. There is no problem to allow Malaysians pilgrims to perform the minor hajj or umrah if the COVID-19 pandemic shows a declining trend. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Religious Affairs, Dato Dr. Zulkifli Muhammad Al-Bakri said the decision, however, is not final and subject to change based on the current COVID-19 situation in the country. Itu jangkaan itu boleh jadi berubah, boleh jadi tak. Seperti sepana baru-baru ini haji pun, pada asasnya memang kita juga bersedia untuk menghantar. Tetapi bila kena melihat suasana dan situasi, dia boleh berubah. Jadi kami menyambut baik apa-apa keputusan tetapi kemaslahatan dan juga dari segi kesihatan memang mana-mana negara pun akan mengutamakannya. 
Meanwhile, Dr. Dr. Zulkifli also did not rule out the possibility of an increase in cost in performing the Umrah, taking into account improvements in terms of security and health due to COVID-19. He said this after visiting Mahat Tafis Al-Quran, Masjid Lama, Kampung Lambuk Kanan, Bota Perak, which was raised recently. The federal road between Simpang Pulai and Cameron Highlands is safe for motorists. State Infrastructure, Energy, Water and Public Transport Committee Chairman Datuk Muhammad Zulkafli Harun said this in response to a photograph of soil erosion along the stretch which has gone viral. He said the viral photograph was of an old incident that had resurfaced and was making its round on social media. Di mana uh, gambar yang ditular uh, cerun yang runtuh. Tapi apa yang kita lihat, yang kita kaji, gambar-gambar yang ditular dalam dalam media sosial uh, baru-baru ini adalah gambar lama. Kerja-kerja penampakan cerun telah dijalankan oleh tie back uh, wall dan microfine slab di sebahagian kawasan cerun runtuhan ini. Besides that, he said the state government through the Perak Public Works Department, JKR, has carried out an inspection and found that there are no erosion at the said location. He also urged the public to be more responsible and careful prior to sharing any news that has not been verified and it might lead to unnecessary panic. Coming up next, Johor to set up Digital Council to promote digital banking. Empowering youth will be among the key elements in the 2021 budget formulation which will be tabled on 6 November. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said the element will be based on a few pillars, namely high-quality education, creating jobs and expanding careers. Besides that, he said the government will also focus on improving access to quality healthcare, food sectors and supporting entrepreneurial endeavours for the youth. Education is important, so government needs to strengthen uh, the education system, uh, both uh, you know, vocational as well as uh, academic. So the other one is entrepreneurship. I mentioned again, uh, mentioned briefly just now about the support that we gave to the youth in, in Prihati and Panjana, especially for the SMEs and the micro SMEs, how they you know, have suffered during this uh, COVID period. But many with the youth that I've met uh, have actually you know, thanked the government to a certain extent for their help. Uh, in giving the financing and also the wage subsidy. According to him, when youth are empowered, they can harness technological advancements and digitalization and come up with innovative solutions to address societal challenges as well as achieve the unsustainable development goals. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul was addressing a town hall session with the Selangor Youth Community in Petaling Jaya. The event was attended by 150 youth as well as a Raja Muda of Selangor, Tengku Amir Shah, Ibn Sultan Sharafuddin Ezra Shah. The Johor State Government will set up the Johor Digital Council soon to help realise its aspiration to have a digital bank. Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad said to make the digital bank a reality, the public should embrace the digital lifestyle in every aspect of their lives. Speaking at the launch of Johor E Marketplace in Kota Iskandar yesterday, he said the state government had in April agreed to establishment of a digital bank to spur the digital economy in Johor. Untuk membolehkan sebuah digital bank ini, digital bank ini menjadi kenyataan, ianya perlulah mempunyai masyarakat yang mempunyai gaya hidup yang menggunakan segala aspek digital sebagai gaya hidup seharian mereka. The bank would make finance sector more inclusive and provide better quality financial services for all market segments, he said, noting that in 2014, 52% of the people in Southeast Asia had used online banking services and the proportion was rising. The program, he said, is a collaboration between the state government and e-commerce platform Shopee aimed at helping some 3,000 entrepreneurs in the state market their products in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. He said in conjunction with the launch of the state government 
government will give attractive discounts vouchers besides comprehensive skills and marketing training to the entrepreneurs involved. The Ministry of Environment and Water, CASA, aims to develop the National River Trails project by building 10,000 kilometres of river trail routes across the country by 2030. Its Secretary General, Datuk Sri IR Dr Zaini Ujang, said for for a start, a 1,000 kilometre river trail route would be built in stages within the next three years. To realise the effort, the project under supervision of the Irrigation and Drainage Department, JPS, is collaborating with Management and Science University, MSU. The project was a government effort to beautify and preserve the ecosystem of rivers without involving high cost. Kita boleh buat banyak cara yang saya sebutkan tadi buat denai. Denai itu secara tak langsung akan mendekatkan masyarakat kepada sungai pada masa yang sama menghalang aktiviti yang boleh mencemarkan sungai. Sebelum ni kita gunakan engineering approach. Engineering approach ni macam-macam lah. Buat logi uh, rawatan ais, kumbahan, rawatan kumbahan harga 1 bilion, 2 bilion uh, tapi tak nampak perubahan sangat kepada kualiti ais sungai. He said this in a press conference after witnessing the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding MOU between JPS and MSU in Shah Alam. The pilot project of National River Trails in Sungai Damansara will be carried out as a Corporate Social Responsibility CSR initiative. Since the implementation of its first radio frequency identification RFID closed toll system in Kedah and Pulau Pinang two weeks ago, PLUS Malaysia Berhad PLUS has been seeing an upward trend in the road users in both states migrating to the contactless and cashless payment system. PLUS Managing Director Dato Azman Ismail in a statement said the closed toll public pilot sanctioned by the Malaysia Highway Authority MHA has seen significant success as the penetration increased from 2.3% to weeks ago to 10% as of yesterday. This was in line with the government's vision towards a multi-lane free flow MLFF for congestion free travel. The support by our highway regulator enabling PLUS to proceed with the first nine designated closed toll plazas. Dato Azman added that the most compelling reason for RFID was that the technology propagated physical distancing as compared with the existing card. Korodua managed to sold 23,203 vehicles in July 2020 and boosting its year-to-date YTD sales total to 97,373 units. This was an increase of 9.2% compared to June sales, thus becoming its biggest sales month so far this year. Perodua President and Chief Executive Officer Datuk Zainal Abidin Ahmad in a statement said the positive achievement was spearheaded by its three top selling models namely MyV, Asia and Beza. MyV, Asia and Beza sold 29,313 units, 28,107 units and 25,416 units respectively. Since its operations restarted after a two-month movement control order MCO closure, the volume has rebounded swiftly aided by government sales tax exemption which will run until year-end. Still ahead, contagion under control in COVID-19 epicenter but spread elsewhere. All Malaysians in Lebanon are reported safe based on the initial report of the Malaysian Embassy in Beirut. This was ascertained by Foreign Minister Datuk Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein. In a statement, Datuk Sri Shamuddin also extends Malaysia's deepest condolences to the government and the people of Lebanon over the tragedy. Malaysians residing in Lebanon have been advised to give utmost priority to their personal safety and follow instructions issued by the relevant authorities of Lebanon. Malaysia also stands ready to support Lebanon in any way possible in the aftermath of the massive explosion that rocked Beirut, Lebanon on Tuesday. 
Two massive explosions at a warehouse in the port of Beirut triggered widespread destruction across the city, leaving at least 135 people dead and injuring more than 5,000 so far. The young Diputuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah yesterday advised Malaysians in Beirut, Lebanon to remain vigilant and contact the Malaysian Embassy for any assistance, inquiries and latest information as well as heed the advice of the local authorities. As the Supreme Commander of the Malaysian Armed Forces, Al Sultan Abdullah also advised the Malaysian Battalion 8507 Malbat 8507 personnel stationed in Lebanon to take extra precautions while performing duties and operations in the country. Comptroller of the Royal Household of Istana Negara Dato Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin in a statement said His Majesty advised the Malbat 8507 personnel to be constantly on the alert to provide disaster and humanitarian assistance. The battalion consisting of 850 personnel was deployed to serve for a year under the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, UNIFIL peacekeeping mission since October last year. He added that His Majesty was very concerned about the safety of Malaysians in the country and following the latest report, Al Sultan Abdullah was thankful that no Malaysians were affected by the explosion. Coming up in sports, Malaysia can't afford to take England, Netherlands lightly. Although Malaysia seems almost assured of a quarter-final berth in the Thomas Cup Finals in October, singles head coach Hendrawan has reminded the team not to be complacent in their first two group matches. He said Malaysia have to win against England and the Netherlands before taking on traditional arch-rivals and 13-time champions Indonesia in the final group match. He said on paper it looks promising for the Malaysian squad but what is important is that they have to win against England and the Netherlands, taking the tournament step by step. The quarterfinals, he added, will be easier in a win against Indonesia rather than finishing second in the group. Met at the Academy of Badminton Malaysia ABM Bukit Kiara yesterday, Hendrawan said Indonesia and Malaysia are expected to be the top two finishers in Group A and qualify for the quarterfinals of the tournament, which will be held in Aarhus, Denmark from 3rd to 11th October. Hendrawan said the final team list has not been decided yet, but he has a rough idea of the players who will shoulder Malaysia's challenge. Hendrawan believes that the country's top men's single player, Li Zijia, will be able to shoulder the heavy responsibility of playing in the first singles. With a lot of experience playing in team events, Zijia played in the Thomas Cup two years ago, Suriman Cup, Asian Games and Sea Games. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the Sports Writers Association of Malaysia, SAM, are fully committed to hosting the SAM 100 Plus Awards next week. The scaled-down award ceremony will be held at the Academy Badminton Malaysia ABM Auditorium in Bukit Kiara on 12th of August. SAM President Jasni Shafi admitted that many had called for the event to be postponed, but the team decided to preserve as they did not want to ignore the 219 entries submitted by local reporters vying for various awards on offer, including the prestigious Sibel Award for the Best Sports Writer of the Year. Kalau sebelum ini kita uh, langsungkan majlis kita dalam satu majlis dinner makan malam di sebuah hotel terkemuka, Tetapi kali ini selepas mendapat nasihat daripada Kementerian Belia dan Sukan serta Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia, kita memilih auditorium yang cantik dan terkawal sedikit ini. Tapi jemputannya kita akan hadkan. Speaking to reporters yesterday, he said although this year's award ceremony needed to be scaled down, Sam did not reduce the prize money, which is more than 50,000 ringgit, including 10,000 ringgit for the Athlete of the Year award. Five athletes, including last year's SEA Games' women's singles champion in badminton, as Kisona, have been nominated for the top prize. The other four are national gymnasts Farah and Abdul Hadi, wushu exponent Loh Chun Hao, cyclist Azizul Hasni Awang, and figure skater Julia. It will be a four-way battle between powerlifter Bonnie Bunyao Gustin, 
Shot putter Zia Zukifli and archers as Suresh and Wiro Anjulin for the Para Athlete of the Year Award. Kepercayaan kepada Tuhan, kesetiaan kepada Raja dan Negara, keluhuran perlembagaan, kedaulatan undang-undang. Kesopanan dan kesusilaan. Inilah continuous. 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 Berjalan lancar tanpa insiden yang boleh mengganggu kesentraman awak. Kepada tayar agar dia kembali. Ya, ini di Wogor. Continuous. Bergerak seiring masa. Continuous. Melangkaui generasi. Berganti teknologi. Continuous. Dari Konti Radio, kini kepaparan visual. Continuous. Soleh Kacilu, Samuga Wudagan Galilu. Continuous. Bringing you the latest local news and foreign stories. Continuous. Yuji wo gong qian de tao guo ge zhong yu yan he fang yan. Continuous. Yiru ba tenan ge mani mei ra mong, ge de ni la mal. Continuous. Kenyalu ru maklumat di taman Malaysia. Inilah Continuous, berita radio anda. Inilah Continuous, berita radio anda. Continuous. That's it from us this afternoon. In our top story, fake document syndicates masterminded by Myanmar nationals busted. News at 10 comes on this evening on my previous Brita RTM News channel. I'm Aslan Yadoni. Goodbye for now.